So in this very graphic and dynamic image of Shinje, the Lord of Death, Yama, we can see how, in the same way that when we saw this kind of rapturous and ecstatic figure of Chakrasamvara, that even in the midst of bliss and sexual union, there was a garland of skulls, a uh, crown of skulls. We see the same kind of paradoxical imagery here. So here we see something that would ordinarily at first sight seem to be about death and impermanence, but with a full erection. So again, there's a symbology to that. It means just in the midst of death, there's also regeneration, there's life, there's a kind of arousal. So all of this is to arouse our minds. It's to arouse our minds to this kind of paradoxical nature of reality that goes beyond the kind of dualistic relationship that we normally have with it. So here we see Yama in full state of arousal with his uh, bull's head surrounded by flames, riding on a prostate bull that's crushing this egoic self. All the kind of small and diminished ways in which we imagine who and what we are. So this is basically about the encountering of the self-annihilation, but the annihilation only of this sort of lesser egoic self that allows for this expanded state of being based upon insight, based upon luminosity, and compassion in which we engage the world in a far more expansive way. And the beauty and the power of the aesthetics of an object like this, which is not a painting, but actually it's embroidered tanka, so an embroidered scroll painting. And we see the same figure, again, as most of the tantric icons are, they're unclothed, they're naked, representing the nakedness of the mind. We see the same kind of chest ornament that we saw, for example, in the yogini. Often these are described as being you know, around uh, the upper part of the body and around the lower part of the torso being made of human bones and at the center a wheel representing the eightfold path to enlightenment as um, described by the historical Buddha 2,500 years ago. In this particular image it's actually a gao, which is an amulet box, but essentially representing the same principle of the heart center. It's bringing our attention to the heart because when you Speak in Tibetan tradition, if you ask Tibetans, you know, where is the mind? It's not here in the head, it's here in the heart. So this heart-mind, which is what we're awakening, the Buddha nature is not in our brain, it's in our entire being. The center of our being is in the heart. So we'll see that in the murals, for example, when we're the kind of visionary forms that are arising are said to arise to vision, but the eyes are directly connected to the heart. So it's literally seeing with the eyes of the heart. And in the same way that the mind that's awakened into its Buddha nature, it's the heart that's awakening, the heart-mind in a kind of unity uh, that is sometimes alien to the way we think of the mind in the West, particularly in a scientific age when we associate it so exclusively with the functioning of the brain. So an image like this is a way, again, of just sort of arousing our awareness. It's a way of recognizing our own mortality, but seeing that as an opportunity to embrace a more expansive sense of being that is no longer sort of enthralled to the kinds of uh, anxieties and, and repressions that are part of everyday life. And we see that powerfully here, you know, represented in the image of Yamantaka. So Yamantaka is the emergence from death. It's the emergence from the fear of death. It's the discovery of what was called in Buddhism, even in its earlier forms, as deathlessness. So deathlessness is the enlightened state of being. It's the recognition that consciousness in its ultimate form as Buddha nature transcends birth and death. So it's this kind of icon that we see moving from Yama to Yamantaka with this efflorescence of arms, this efflorescence of heads representing this complete awakening to a transcendent state of being which is no longer kind of dualistically inscribed by cycles of birth and death and rebirth. It's actually the transcendence into what the Buddha called the deathless.